Well, hello. It's Wednesday. If you are tuning in live to this Nancy Teeter Wellness Wednesday video, I welcome you. And I encourage you to submit comments and questions during this episode that I may be able to answer while I'm live. If you're watching this as a recorded video, feel free to leave comments with your questions and I will try to answer them either fully in a response to your comment or if you have questions that are unrelated to this topic, we will try to address them in future issues. So I want to ask you this question. Do you know that the knowledge about the connection between what you eat and your mood is stronger than ever. Also want to know if you've heard the term nutritional psychiatry. It's really an emerging field and it is supported by ongoing studies. And these studies help expand our understanding of the relationship between nutrition and mental health. So I just want to um, just make sure that I'm able to see any questions that come in. I'm going to adjust my screen here a minute. Okay. In this video, I'm going to give you some information that, uh, that you can use um, that comes from these studies. And I want this information to be practical. I want you to be able to leave with some steps that you can take that not only improve your mental health, but your overall health. Because better nutrition helps everyone. Now the connection between food and mood is absolutely unquestionable. Upgrading your nutritional status can help you cope with stress. And that's something that we are all dealing with these days. Also improving your diet for better mental health has the potential to offer some additional positive outcomes. And those include things like potential weight loss, improvements in your immune function, better blood sugar controls, better cholesterol levels, improved blood pressure levels, as well as reduced risk of insomnia. So you can see there's a lot of reasons to really improve your overall diet. So even if you're not blue, you can still benefit from incorporating the things that I talk about today. But I want to start by talking about the link between nutrient deficiency and depression. And as if you've listened to previous videos or watched previous videos, you know that early nutrition science was all about preventing deficiencies as opposed to overall health. And we know that there is a link between certain nutrients being deficient and having mental disorders. And we know that people may be able to ward off depression by assuring that they are not deficient in key nutrients that are associated with mood. Now, I want to remind my viewers that nutrition is complicated. It is complex. Nutrients interact with one another. And so looking at individual nutrients sometimes is short-sighted, but I do want to mention a few nutrients that when they are deficient can result in being depressed. These nutrients include magnesium, folate, zinc, as well as vitamins D, B12, and B6. To ensure that you have adequate amounts of all of these nutrients, I'm just going to give you some general foods to include in your diet on a regular basis. And the greater the variety you have in your diet, the less risk you're going to have of any nutrient deficiency. So the things that I encourage you to keep in your diet that we know are good for brain, number one is leafy greens. And number two is berries, especially blueberries. In addition, we want to have good sources of healthy fat like avocado, whole grains. I'm sorry, whole grains is not a source of healthy fat. Avocado, nuts and seeds, and then unstripped whole grains like brown rice and barley and oats. And then things like asparagus and broccoli, as well as beans and legumes and a couple of other fruits that are important for, for brain health are bananas and citrus fruit category. 
Good news, a half ounce dose of dark chocolate daily provides magnesium as well as mood enhancing polyphenols. Dark chocolate is defined as anything that's 70% cacao or higher. Also important is an adequate supply of the sunshine vitamin. That's vitamin D. It helps ward off depression. Now, the best way to get your vitamin D is to spend 10 to 20 minutes in direct sunlight without sunscreen and without clothing. And you can do that like between 10 and 11 o'clock in the morning. And, you, and the risk of skin damage is pretty low at that time of day. But we can also get small amounts of vitamin D from foods. Those include salmon and sardines and eggs, and also mushrooms that have been exposed to ultraviolet light, but you need to look for ones that are labeled good source of vitamin D. However, all that said, a supplement is typically required to achieve a healthy blood level of this nutrient. So we could look for 1,000 to 2,000 international units of vitamin D3 daily. Be sure that you take it with a meal that includes some fat. In terms of vitamin B12, it is vital for brain health and it is only found in animal foods but you can also get it from fortified nutritional yeast or a B12 supplement. So I have covered preventing deficiencies, but what about for nutrients where there is not really a recommended daily allowance? Let's talk about some of those. In addition to um, lower blood markers for inflammation, anti-inflammatory fats are linked to a reduced risk of depression. And one of the best studies anti-inflammatory fat are the omega-3 fatty acid, specifically DHA and EPA. Those are the active forms. ALA that is found in, in plant products like nuts and seeds are not necessarily supportive of brain health. So these Omega-3 fatty acids are best obtained from foods like wild salmon and other fatty fish that I've talked about in previous episodes. In a study conducted this year, researchers found that women who ate fish twice weekly had a 25% lower risk of depression than the women who ate fish less frequently than that. Another anti-inflammatory fat category are the monounsaturated fats. Great sources of monounsaturated fat include the avocado, as well as avocado oil if it's unrefined, and extra virgin olive oil, which is by definition unrefined and very high in antioxidants and the anti-inflammatory monounsaturated fats. Also, certain antioxidants, including flavonoids that are found in berries, beans, citrus, and apples, are inversely associated with depressive symptoms. Now, all of these, um, except the apple, was listed in my original list of foods to take in to make sure that you're not having a shortage or a deficiency of specific nutrients. So when we take these foods in, we automatically get these antioxidants that are in the food as well. Everything I've mentioned so far is part of the anti-inflammatory diet. Scientists agree there is a direct link between inflammatory foods and depression risk. Research has long shown that the typical inflammatory Western diet which includes sugary drinks, refined grains, fried food, processed meat, high fat dairy, and, and excess intake of sweets is associated with an increased risk of depression. So if you haven't already done so, you should begin to reduce the number of servings a week of these ultra processed foods. The study between the gut and the brain, that connection is ongoing and it is fascinating. When we combine probiotic rich foods with sources of prebiotics, it can actually ease depressive symptoms. 
So what are some sources of probiotic rich foods? I really encourage organic unsweetened yogurt and kefir. Um, if you are have any kind of a problem with dairy, then you could be looking at some other sources, including tempeh, which is fermented soybeans. And when we combine these foods with foods that are good sources of prebiotics, then we also are providing food for the gut bacteria. So some examples of foods that are prebiotic include raw oats, banana, nuts, and seeds. Mm. Again, foods that are already been listed for helping ward off depressive symptoms, and it's no coincidence. Why raw oats? It's because they resist digestion in the small intestine and arrive in the large intestine ready to feed the gut bacteria. So when we make sure that we get both prebiotics and probiotics in our diet, it could result in positive changes in the balance of gut microbes that influence inflammation. So we can reduce inflammation and we can improve immune function and elevate our mood. So overall, the healthiest diet pattern that does have a definition is the Mediterranean diet. And the studies have found that the Mediterranean diet significantly reduces the risk of depression. So you can find lots of resources on the internet for what the Mediterranean diet looks like. Dr. Andrew Weil's anti-inflammatory diet pyramid is based on the Mediterranean diet with a couple of tweaks. So you can also go to drweil.com for more information on a diet pattern that helps ward off depression. Overall, the patterns are high in vegetables, fruits, fish, nuts, pulses, and olive oil while severely restricting ultra-processed foods. Sometimes studies have shown that just simply eating more vegetables and fruits can increase mental health by between 19 and 23%. So if you need data to back up dietary changes, I've given it to you. If you, again, if you have questions about nutrition, I encourage you to, um, Give me some comments in the field. I'm looking. It doesn't look like I've had some comments while I was live. So I look forward to your questions and comments on the broadcast recorded. Have a happy Wednesday. Eat well. Eat to nourish your body. And eat with joy. Until next week, this is Nancy Teeter out.